Morning. Meetings start promptly at 9 o'clock, Rhonda, unless I'm running late. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. We are a board of three today. Uh, Supervisors Ennis and Crocker are in Washington, D.C. Uh, that being said, we will begin today's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. We'll be led today by Supervisor Worthen. Thank you. Please join me in pledging our great American flag. Ready? Salute. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and get today's meeting started with uh, what should be the shortest Board of Supervisors matters uh, ever since there's only three of us. Um, and we'll begin with Supervisor Shuckling. Okay, thank you. Uh, last Thursday night, I, I attended the Pro Youth uh, Legacy Dinner honoring uh, Stan and Wendy Simpson. It was uh, a very nice event with a, with a lot of um, folks there from throughout the community to support Pro Youth. On um, Sunday, I attended the Cuya Delta Pink Tea, which is uh, an annual um, fundraiser for breast cancer awareness. This was the sixth annual. Uh, I remember attending the first one, which was in a conference room at the uh, Sequoia Regional Cancer Center with about 75 people. On Sunday, it was in the Convention Center Exhibit Hall with over 800 people. So, um, yes, it's a, a very good event, raises uh, money, and of course brings the awareness to uh, breast cancer, um, getting out there and getting your mammograms, which I need to do. Maybe I'll Facebook Live it. Um, this afternoon I have uh, the Visalia Property Owners Association uh, meeting, and then tomorrow, two big events coming up. Tomorrow is our Homeless Summit at the Wyndham Hotel starting at 7.30 a.m. We have uh, some great keynote speakers and breakout sessions. Um, so far, I believe there's over 200 people who have registered for the event. So very excited about that. And I think we're going to get a, a lot of good participation, people get, going away with uh, resources and how we can all work together to help uh, resolve some of the issues that we have uh, with our homeless population. And then on Saturday, we is Make a Difference Day, and we will be at Mooney's Grove Park from 9 to noon, along with CSET, who will be organizing a lot of the projects. Uh, we have uh, painting to do and trees to plant. Also at the museum, if you all recall, a few, uh, well, last month, there was some vandalism that was done there, and we will also, uh, there's still a mess to clean up, so uh, we will be helping to clean up uh, the mess in the um, Museum. So 9 to noon on Saturday, there will be snacks and refreshments. Right, John? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I encourage everybody uh, out there and those who are listening um, who treasure Mooney's Grove as much as I do and a lot of other folks to uh, get out there and help us uh, keep it up. So that's all I have. All right. Supervisor Worthley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last week I was in Sacramento um, uh, as the the uh, president of the uh, Tler, or, I'm sorry, the San Joaquin Valley Water Infrastructure Authority um, uh, uh, joint, uh, you know, we had filed an application for Temperance Flat, and it was a kind of a critical component of that application that we uh, were under the impression we would be allowed some additional days to um, submit, and then when we did, they rejected that. Um, it, it's kind of complicated. Uh, but anyway, we were up there to try to convince the commission they should go ahead and accept that um, piece of uh, uh, analysis, and uh, they uh, were not going to do that, but they did agree to carry it over because they were missing three of their members to, an, uh, to a future meeting. So we will be um, getting together and trying to decide how we can best approach this. Uh, it may be a legal issue about how we will go forward, but uh, we really want to... Um, pursue this. Last night I uh, participated in and was you may have seen on channel 26 they had a town hall 
um, message on the fight for water. We had three state representatives. Uh, Mario Santoyo was also part of the panel. He's our executive director for, for the Temperance Platte Project and the president of ACWA, which is a statewide water association. Um, it was attended probably by about 100 people. Um, there were those who were there, obviously, as, as proponents of the project, those who were there in opposition to the project. Um, I, but overall, I thought it was an excellent program, and I thought it was good because we need to do more uh, education of the public because everybody agrees we need more understands, we need more water after having gone through the droughts that we've been through these last few years. Um, and the fact that this year when we had an excessive amount of water, we lost in the case of the San Joaquin River two and a half million acre feet of water to the bay. Uh, how, how do we get that done? How do we accomplish that? And so uh, I think it's important that we can in, in educate the public. They voted for the water bond, which is the source of funding for a, a portion of this project. And we need to help them understand how we're going to get it done. So I thought it was a very good program. I appreciate um, Channel 26 uh, providing that forum. So that was last night. That's what I got for the day. All right. Thank you very much, Supervisor Worthley. Um, so this morning, uh, I had a uh, early childhood planning uh, education uh, legislative breakfast that I was the uh, scheduled welcoming speaker, and uh, child care works both ways, and on my end, rather than being able to go speak and be a proponent of our early childhood uh, education and planning, my son had a doctor, had to go to the doctor, and uh, my wife didn't get back in time for me to go speak, so uh, <laughs> as I was watching my other two children. So child, child care is very critical in our community and uh, very critical <laughs> being able to uh, speak at uh, <laughs> scheduled commitments. Um, that being said, uh, there's a retirement board meeting uh, this Wednesday at 8.30. Um, the audit committee meets uh, Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and the San Joaquin Valley Insurance Authority meets Friday uh, in Fresno at 9 o'clock. Um, Taste Treats uh, is a great event for the Tulare Historical Society. Uh, it takes place Monday, uh, October 30th at Pavilion C at the International Agri Center. Uh, it's a wonderful event, always very well attended. Uh, and uh, there's nothing controversial about a historical society, so please come out and support. Um, and then uh, real quick, I wanted to uh, uh, share a, a story that I thought it was very touching. I know that... Uh, Every day, our county employees get an opportunity to uh, have significant impacts in the community and, and help uh, better people's lives. But uh, uh, my wife actually came across this and uh, uh, told me that I really should uh, point out the uh, uh, deputies in the Pixley substation and uh, really commend them for their, uh, their work in this case. So um, this is reading off of a Facebook uh, post. Uh, deputies with the Pixley substation responded to an address Wednesday to check the welfare of a ch small child. They observed the eight-year-old child to be in good spirits. He lives with his dad, a single parent, who is going through some hard times. The boy did not have much clothing, and there was no food in the house. Deputies sprang into action to support this family and went on a shopping spree. They were able to get the child a bike with a helmet and some other toys. They went to the Pixley Food Mart to buy groceries for the family. The store owner was moved by the family's story and told the deputies to get what they needed for the family at no cost. The deputies delivered, some, delivered the items to the family, and the father and his young son were both very appreciative. And then a uh, quote, this is what it's all about, building bridges in the community, Lieutenant Lyles said. I believe in Sheriff Boudreaux's motto for the sheriff's office, and I believe together we will be the difference. And, and you know, I just thought that was a very uh, touching uh, a story and it really shows the bond between uh, our law enforcement and the community, both uh, rising to the occasion to help a, a family in need. And I thought that was very special. So, uh, commendations to uh, uh, Lieutenant Lyles and the, the crew down at the Pixley substation, and, and also really want to thank Pixley Food Mart for uh, uh, stepping up and helping to make that possible. All right, that concludes Board of Supervisors matters. And we're now going to move on to item two on the agenda, which is public comments. This time, members of the public may comment on any item not on today's agenda, but under our purview. Uh, public comment can and will be limited to three minutes. Is there anybody here wishing to speak under public comment this morning? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public comment period and bring it to the board to take up the consent calendar. Item number four will be removed and considered uh, at a later date, specifically October 31st. Uh, any additional items uh, to be pulled or commented on by members of the board? Members of the public? Oh, sorry. 
Okay, seeing none, Chair will entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Supervisor Shuckley and a second by Supervisor Worthley. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously, three to zero, with Supervisor Crocker and Ennis not voting because they are not in attendance. We will now move on to item number 12, uh, which is a request from the Tulare County Employees Retirement Association to ratify, approve, and adopt the personnel resolution to add one full-time flex class accountant 123 position for the retirement agency effective October 29th, 2017. Anyone want to come to the podium and speak on this? Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> um, good morning. I'm just here, uh, Leanne Mallison, uh, Assistant Retirement Administrator, just to answer any questions the supervisors may have re regarding this item. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, seeing no questions or comments, and I, I do sit on the retirement board, and the need was definitely uh, documented for this position, and. Uh, making sure that uh, we're able to meet all the uh, various needs of retirees uh, in the department. And as, and I approach that, as I approach that magical time and uh, date, uh, I would be glad to move this matter. All right. It's because of you that they need the extra person. Uh, well, now I've got two old colleagues supporting this thing, so I guess we're going to uh, move this for a vote. Is there anybody here wishing to speak on this? Okay, seeing none, I have a motion by Supervisor Worthley. Second by Supervisor Shuckling, please vote. Motion passes unanimously, three to zero with uh, Supervisor Ennis and Supervisor Crocker not voting because they are not in attendance. We'll now take up item 13, which is a request from the General Services Department to approve an amendment to agreement 27894 with Fork and Mackey uh, Inc. for phase one of the countywide space improvement and relocation project. And this is an increase in uh, the agreement amount, and this amount is paid for by County Council's budget, correct? Every penny. Every Great. Penny. So good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Spada, Ms. Peterson, John Hess, Deputy CAO, General Services, Capital Projects. As mentioned by the chairman, this is a change order, uh, amendment to the contract for our countywide space improvement project. As you're aware, we've completed the HRD project. We are um, in the process of relocating uh, the Sheriff's Department. Fire is already relocated. So we've uh, completed the fire, sheriff, and EOC component. So of phase one, the only element still in construction is the county council component. And so this is for that portion of the project in the amount of $219,000. It breaks into a variety of different areas of the project. And so that is part of the change order contingency, which was built into the budget. And this was uh, presented previously to the ad hoc committee for the uh, project here. So I'll just highlight some of the changes that we've made as a result of these change orders. We've enlarged some conference rooms, subdivided several offices. We expanded the data and uh, electrical connectivity in several of the rooms. We are doing a full remodel and renovation of the break room. So that's a full ground up uh, new break room that we'll be doing there. Exterior sidewalk changes as a result of relocating some exterior doors, as well as some security and access control improvements. So all good things in investing in our county assets and improving the, the useful uh, functionality for the building for the department. And um, the project is about 50% completed. In the next few weeks, the, the portion of the uh, individuals that are stationed at the building will relocate to the other half of the building, at which point we will do the construction in that half of the building. Those folks will then go back to their original port part of the building and the uh, people from the outside will come into the building. All of this will be said and done probably by mid-February of next year. While I'm here, I can give an update on phase two and some other parts of the project. Phase two is out to bid right now. Bid opening is November 28th and we will be in construction most likely provided the contracts are all approved uh, without any issues beginning of 2018. So those are where we stand right now on the space projects generally. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments? Well, from, just uh, a comment. Go ahead. Um, I forgot who was up there. John? <laughs> I better look up. <laughs> now, these changes, were these on our part as we, as we moved along? We said, okay, we need to do this or that, or did they come up um, from the contractor? And what I'm getting at is it's a lot of change orders. So, you know, did somebody, not saying anything negative about this company, but put in a, a lower bid and then turn around and have a lot of change orders? Or? Not at all. Okay. Fork and Mackey's been a fantastic yeah, contract throughout good. the process. And um, really, it's working with them as we have so well over the last year. It's been about 
11 months since we executed the contract, we've been able to do things much more cost effectively than if we were to come back and do them after the projects. The primary reasons for, for the reason for these change orders is not from the department request or from the, uh, the failure of the, of the contractor. It really is to do with the plans. When we make changes or when we um, see things in the plans that were not included as they should have been in the original uh, instance, those have additional uh, incidental changes. So if you make a, a change to a room that we didn't envision at the beginning, that has not only floor plan but hardware and electrical and door changes. So that's kind of that's the the essence of all of these changes at this time. All right, thank you. Okay, Supervisor. Ward. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I mean, I, I can remember when we first uh, established the Millennial Fund, we we couldn't even get projects out to replace carpet in in, in this office and other offices and spend money. And we have no problem spending money now. But I mean, and the good news is that we are making such major improvements to our assets in this county. And, uh, and the, these are one-time expenses with one-time dollars, but they will return a tremendous investment back to our employees, back to the residents of Tulare County. Uh, tremendous project. I did have one question. It's kind of unrelated to this, but maybe not. Uh, is there any uh, plans on the dem demolition of the old annex building next to the uh, uh, existing structure? Yeah, the mobile building yes. on the exterior there. Yes. There's no uh, identified plan for demolishing it at this time. It's not in the best shape, but it is usable for kind of incidental administrative purposes. I thought it was going to be an employee gym. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the weights would probably fall through the floor if okay. we, uh, we our, 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 our council indicates that she's got a, a plans for it or something, a dog kennel or what was it? <laughs> we're we're, not good enough we're using it as like our war room, a collaboration room. Uh, a lot of it will be our law library. It's okay. also uh, a building that would allow us to have all office meetings or those types of functions where we don't have to come next door and reserve a room here. So we're looking forward to keeping it, even though it is a modular unit. Well, then my only comment is then, because having gone in and out of that building over a number of years, is it definitely needs some attention. So I don't know whether we're planning on doing some rebasing on the outside or what, but I mean, it's a pretty, it, 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 it's had its use over the years and it's not in the best of conditions, at least on have, the exterior. We do not have anything identified for improving that building at this time. We can contemplate or uh, look at what would be needed to increase the functionality for county council to that and maybe some furniture inside or, or at least painting or doing some flashing on the outside to shore I, it up I, a little I bit. I think you should take a quick look, good look at the outside. It may need more than just paint. <laughs> but uh, And I mean, if we're going to keep it, that's fine. But I do think it's kind of... <laughs> It's troublesome to think we would go to all this trouble to fix up the buildings next door and then leave something that looks as shabby as that building does next to it. Yeah, right? So it, it needs to be, I think, part and parcel of the part of the process. So Make sorry to bring day. it up a little bit late, but I do think it needs to be looked at. And, and I was just going to make a comment. I think that this is uh, obviously you hate to see costs uh, go up, but when it does uh, improve the functionality of the building, I think that it's uh, well worth it. And um, not only are we improving county assets and uh, basically preserving them for, for the long future. But uh, I also think this is an investment in our employees and making sure that they have uh, good, comfortable working spaces. Uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're consolidating a department that has been spread a, a long distance within the county, and we're bringing them all under one roof. Uh, I think it's going to work uh, better for that department, and it's going to be better working conditions for the employees with a newly renovated building. Uh, and so I see all positive in this, too, uh, and I'm very supportive. Any public comments uh, related to this? Okay, seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a second. motion by Supervisor Wordley, a second by Supervisor Shuckley, and please vote. Motion passes unanimously, 3-0, to zero, with Supervisor Crocker and Nims not voting because they are not in attendance. Council, uh, do we have need for a uh, closed session? Well, Mr. Chairman, I did want to lodge one complaint. I got my tax bill yesterday. <laughs> we got... You know, we got a brand new auditor, you know, tax collector. You think you think that we could get one year off? Yeah. But, you know, it's it's there. I got it in my mail yesterday. Yeah, so. they are there. Um, <laughs> Council, do you have? Uh, uh, do you want to comment on general closed session? I know that we do have an employee uh, discipline hearing. That I know there's an employee here who might want to comment. Correct. So um, items A through D will be heard in closed session. I do anticipate that there may be an announcement out. 
The closed session today does include a personnel matter in which the County Council's office has established an ethical wall. I am on the hearing advocate side of that wall, so I will personally not be attending this closed session. Chief Deputy Clint Sims will attend the closed session in my place and will be the final authority in regard to advising the board in this matter. And I do understand that there is public comment on this item, so I will now step down and I believe the public comment period is limited to three minutes yes, that's per correct. speaking. Okay. Uh, public comment will be entertained at this time. Public comment will be limited to three minutes. Uh, Mr. Slosser, would you like to speak? morning I want to thank you guys for the timely manner that this was done I got informed yesterday from the County Council office that this meeting was going to be as anticipating 30 days and I do appreciate the phone call and the follow-up on that I have read the documentation from uh, Judge DeCur and I do agree with him I did do some mistakes and I take responsibility for it but I was never given the opportunity to rectify those mistakes or prove to the county that I do want to rectify and justify those. So I request that you guys please read the documentation because the judge has given a fair assessment of what had happened. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Any additional uh, public comment? Sure, that's Stephanie. Stephanie Smittel, Deputy County Counsel representing the Parks and Grounds Department. The Parks and Grounds Department requests the board reject the recommended decision by the ALJ in this disciplinary matter for three reasons. First, there were numerous sustained allegations relating to five of six of the allegations of misconduct, including uh, that the employee made receipt and deposit errors resulting in shortages, failed to report missing receipts for collection of park fees to a supervisor, caused a collision with a parked vehicle in the motor pool parking lot, uh, and lied about the cause. He unsafely operated heavy equipment, creating a dangerous situation for himself and others, and he caused damage to property while operating a tractor. The ALJ incorrectly failed to sustain allegations of insubordination, and I would like to request that the board review factual finding 31. Third, the misconduct does in fact negatively impact the public service and is likely to recur. Conduct which reflects discredit on the public service is that which can reasonably result in the impairment or disruption of the public service. Unsafe operation of equipment impairs and disrupts the public service. Dishonesty when reporting actions does not demonstrate the high standards of conduct expected for county employees. Destruction of county property not once, not twice, but three times impairs and disrupts. Parks and Grounds has determined that this misconduct is capable of repetition. Damage to county property when operating machinery on three separate occasions creates a lack of confidence by the department that the employee can adequately and safely perform his duties and demonstrates that these acts are likely to recur. As noted on page 12 of the recommended decision by the ALJ, the appointing authority has broad discretion to select an appropriate penalty. However, the employing agency is in the best position to judge the impact of the employee's misconduct on the operations to the agency, the prospects for the employee's rehabilitation, and encourage high standards of conduct by employees. Case law has held that counties do not need to prove all of the charges, but if any of the charges are proven, discipline can be sustained. Boards are, invest, are vested with uh, high discretion to determine the appropriate level of discipline. Parks and Grounds has demonstrated numerous county violations, and based on the totality of the circumstances with these numerous policy violations, including dishonesty, we request that the board reject the recommended decision by the ALJ and uphold the level of discipline imposed by the department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any additional public comments at this time? Okay, seeing none, uh, I will now adjourn our open session meeting and convene the board in closed session. Thank you for attending today's meeting and I will see you on Halloween. Have a great week. Clint Sims, Chief Deputy.
the Board of Supervisors took action in a personnel matter to modify the recommendation, findings, conclusions, decision of the ALJ as the decision of the Board to set aside the dismissal and fully reinstate the employee. The employee shall be suspended 30 days without pay and to be on probation for six months. A person in the position of Clyde Slusher. The roll call vote was Supervisor Crocker absent, uh, Supervisor Vanderpool, I, Supervisor Shecklin, I, Supervisor Worthley, I, and Supervisor Ennis absent. Supervisor Worthley made the motion and Supervisor Shecklin second. That concludes the announcements out. <laughs>